Okay, so now we're going to look at the Sager traction splint. The Sager traction splint is designed for an isolated femur fracture, either one leg or bilaterally. Um, uh, you want to utilize this when there's no other life threats to the patient um, and there's no other injuries above or below this isolated femur fracture. That's the only time that this, this tool can really be used. Uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to assess the circulation sensation and movement distally to the injury. So if this patient has a uh, isolated femur fracture of their left leg, uh, we want to remove their, um, their shoe so we can have a look. So we're looking at the circulation and uh, sensation and uh, movement in their feet. So you want to look to see if they have a pulse, feel for a pedal pulse. You want to check out the skin color, temperature, and moisture to make sure that there is uh, blood flow um, uh, distal to the injury. Uh, the next thing you want to do is you want to expose the injury. So um, this patient's in a lot of pain, so you're going to need to uh, cut away their clothing. So the best way to cut jeans is just to make uh, an incision right at the seam until you get through the cuff. And then it's easy just to simply tear it away. So now we've got our isolated femur fracture exposed. At this point, you want to stabilize the leg. Um, so I'm going to ask my partner to come in and apply manual traction. Just a gentle traction to uh, relieve some of the pain that's and, and uh, uh, pressure of the, both the bone ends hitting each other here. So he's going to do that manual traction while I apply the traction splint. So this is the Sager splint here. Um, and this, this uh, upper portion here does bend to conform to either the left or the right side. So um, you really need to explain to the patient what you're doing when you're applying this and how it's going to make their, uh, the pain in their, in their fracture feel a lot better once we stabilize that. So I'm going to work the strap underneath their knee here and bring it up. And you want to place the, um, the top right in the crotch of the patient, being careful not to harm their genitalia in any way. But explain to them that this is necessary. I'm sure a really nice snug fit there. Okay. And you really want this above the fracture. Right. The next thing you want to do is you want to size your, um, the length of this. So the end should be just uh, about an inch or two longer than the, uh, the leg of the patient. Time to apply the ankle cuff. There's a left and a right, so just make sure you have the right one. And that's going to go underneath the patient's ankle. And you want to make that as snug as you possibly can. Now it affixes to your to the sager. And we are going to snug it up. So now it's time to apply the traction because the, the, the splint is in place. You want to apply um, traction 10% um, of the patient's body weight up to a maximum of 15 pounds of pressure. So if the patient is 150 pounds or heavier, um, you're going to give them the, the maximum amount of uh, traction at 15 pounds. So this patient looks to be 150 pounds, so we are going to um, apply the traction. So as I'm applying the traction, I'm gently pulling back and watching the gauge until I get to that 15. And that's about right. That's about 15 right there. So if the traction's in, you can, you can let go. And now uh, the splint is providing that traction onto the leg. Okay, so now it's time to apply the cravats around here. So there's three of them. The first one uh, goes around the very top and it's gonna splint both legs together. Split the bad leg to the good leg. 
and there's really not a whole lot of trick to it other than just slipping your slipping it underneath as, as gently and as quickly as possible and pulling it through and shimmying it down to where it needs to be right over top and then below the fracture somewhere above the knee Again, if you can get it around both legs, then great. This one just barely fits. I think we'll be able to keep that one on. And then a third one here as well. The last thing you want to do is put on a, um, a figure eight. So this goes underneath. and across the top and then it brings both feet in together and you tighten it. So now that we've got our splints in place um, you want to check, recheck the sensation, circulation and movement um, in that limb. Um, so you want to assess the skin color, temperature, moisture, see if they have any sensation, uh, capillary refill and um, ask them if they can move their toes at all. And that's the splint. Now you're ready for transport.